And now my interview with President Trump. Mr. President, thank you so much for being here today. We really appreciate thank you. it. Thank you, Larry. Uh, I know you're heading to Pittsburgh tomorrow, and uh, Rabbi Jeffrey Myers from the Tree of Life Synagogue said last night the following. And I want to address for a moment some of our political leaders who are here. Ladies and gentlemen, it has to start with you as our leaders. My words are not intended for, as political fodder. <laughs> Stop the words of hate. So given his words, uh, what do you think your role tomorrow will be and should be? Well, I'm just going to pay my respects. I'm also going to the hospital to see the officers and uh, some of the people that were so badly hurt. So, and I really look forward to going. I would have done it even sooner, but I didn't want to disrupt any more than they already had disruption. Uh, but I look forward to going to Pittsburgh tomorrow. Um, you said over the weekend you might even tone up your rhetoric. The media today seized on it at Sarah Huckabee Sanders' uh, press briefing. Uh, they're pointing fingers at you, saying, look, you could do more. You're the leader of the free world. What do you say to that? Well, you know, I did a rally, and uh, I said, in fact, I was thinking about canceling it. I also did the Young Farmers, and uh, it was great doing that. And then I had a rally afterwards. And then I said, you know, you make them too important if you start canceling. I remember Dick Grasso wanted to get the stock exchange opened as soon as possible. He did a great job. And other things. Once you start doing that, once you cancel, so you're doing a rally, and rallies are meant to be fun. Rallies are meant to be everything. And I said, tone it down. And then you saw the group saying, no, don't tone it down. Don't tone it down. So uh, we had a great rally in Illinois for some great people. And frankly, um, I think that's probably the way it should be. You should go about your life. You can't let these people disrupt any more than they already have, which is disgraceful. What he did is disgraceful. You can't let it happen. As far as what the rabbi said, I agree with him. The word nationalism has taken on for the left this connotation of fueling anti-Semitism, hate, even violence. Do you think that is fair? And do you want to no. further clarify what nationalism means no. to you? To me, I don't have to clarify. It means I love the country. It means I'm fighting for the country. I look at two things, globalists and nationalists. I'm somebody that wants to take care of our country because for many, many years, you know this better than anybody, our leaders have been more worried about the world than they have about the United States, and they leave us in a mess, whether it's the wars, whether it's uh, the economy, whether it's debt, whether it's all of the things that they've done, including putting in the wrong Supreme Court justices, and we've, we've really put two great ones in. No, I'm proud of this country. And I call that nationalism. I call it being a nationalist. And I don't see any other connotation than that. Now, as soon as you make any statement nowadays with the political correctness world, they make a big deal. Uh, I'm not a globalist, but I want to take care of the globe. But first, I have to take care of our country. I want to help people around the world, but we have to take care of our country or we won't have a country, including we have to take care of our country at the border. When you hear people use the phrase anti-Semitism to describe anything connected to you. You have a Jewish daughter. You have grandchildren who are Jewish. What's your reaction to that? And I just received an award from the state of Israel, from Bibi Netanyahu, thanking me because I moved the, as you know, the embassy to Jerusalem, making Jerusalem the capital of Israel. And I just did that. Now, how many presidents said they were going to do it and they never did it? Many, many presidents. I won't go over the names, but I can tell you every one of them. I can tell you what every one of them said. I just opened up, and we opened it up. We didn't don't just name it. You know, it was going to take years and years to build, and it was going to cost over a billion dollars. I opened up a beautiful building for $400,000, already opened, saved well over a billion dollars. And it's, it's opened after four months. And you were criticized for that, too. You were criticized at the time, I believe, for being too pro-Palestinian. And now you're criticized yeah. on the other side. And, and in fact, this horrible human being, this terrible person that did the shooting, uh, he was not a Donald Trump fan because he said I was too close to Israel. So uh, that seemed to be his reasoning. So I will tell you, I'm going to show you right after this, I'm going to show you the most beautiful plaque. It just came. They must have known you were going to be doing this interview, but it was sent by Bibi Netanyahu thanking me for opening the embassy in Jerusalem, which, as you know, is like 
the biggest deal. The uh, phrase enemy of the people, another phrase that's been seized upon uh, by many in the media, yeah, sure. many on CNN, but not just CNN. There was a woman who was just on CNN a short while ago saying that you have radicalized more people than ISIS. That was CNN today. Well, that must be some kind of a sick woman. When I say the enemy of the people, I'm talking about the fake news, and you know it better than anybody. You have news out there that is so fake, and I can do the greatest thing ever, North Korea, as an example. We would have been going to war. Normal would have been going to war with North Korea. I think President Obama would have gone to war very, if he had an extra year, he would be in right now a war with North Korea. He told me it was by far, and I'm not knocking him for this, he said it's by far his biggest problem. Look at what we've done. And yet, when they talk about North Korea, they say, What's taking so long? But you know they're going to be biased. Yeah, but, but you know they're going to be This has been going biased. on for 70 some odd years. Yeah. And they say, I, I, left, I left Singapore, where we had our meeting, yeah. where we really had a very good meeting and a good relationship, like what, four months ago. They say the new line is, what's taking so long? I say, we have plenty But how does it help expand your base to call them the enemy of the people? How does it help uh, because, America heal in times like this? I'll tell you why, it's like a very this. good question, very fair. Before we finish, though. So we've done a great job with North Korea. Then they said, we can't get them in anything because the sanctions are on, we got everything, there's no missiles, we got our hostages back, we have the remains coming, everything. So now they said, he met. The new line is, well, I course, met. But now, why listen are you to this. expecting they're going to be fair to no, you? No, but think of it. They're could, never going to be fair to you. Lord, think of it. I met. <laughs> okay, that's their new line. I shouldn't have met. So, you know, and if you go back to before I got here, uh, it looked like we were going to war a bad war yeah. with North Korea. So, uh, But I was here with Reagan. I worked for Reagan. They called him stupid, dumb, slept in the afternoon, incompetent, a warmonger. And he always kind of, he was yeah, like, he, he, he had steely, but he was, he, no, he, but, I, but he didn't have uh, social media. Yeah, that's true. He would have fought back. Uh, he didn't have social media. When they, it's, it's my form of, of telling the truth. Here's the problem. We have a lot of supporters. You know that better than anybody. All you have to do is look at your ratings, okay? But you know it better than anybody. Those supporters know that they're lying. I watched Meet the Press this weekend. Everything was so falsely put, putting words in people's mouths. Are they trying to hobble you in the midterms because oh, you're 100%. the best closer for this party? That's what the Republicans they're are saying. They're going out of their way. And I'm getting 25 and 30,000 people to these rallies. Nobody's ever seen it. There has never been anything. This isn't bragging. There has never been anything like what's happening. I went to Illinois. You had to see a Boeing 747, this massive hangar packed and they had to use a second hanger for the overflow nobody's seen anything yeah. and always look what happened for ted cruz who's doing great now we left houston he's now doing great they don't even talk about that race and his opponent is not very the good. bomber who sent the send the letters to the cnn and democrats was a fan of yours he obviously also seems insane completely insane so what do you say about that? You put bomb in quotes. They went crazy over that, too, over the weekend, because you used the well, word bomb well, in quotes. Look, look at it Would you like to kind of... No, I look, uh, he, was, he was insane a long time before you look at his medical records. He was insane for a long time. Bernie Sanders had a fan who shot a very good friend of ours, yep. Steve Scalise, and other people. He was a total maniac. Nobody puts his name in the headline, Bernie Sanders, in the headline with the maniac. In fact, Nancy shooting. Pelosi said, do not politicize this back at the time. I was in the headline of the Washington Post, my name associated with this crazy bomber, yeah. Trump bomber or something. But I was in the headline when they got him. They didn't say bomber found. They talked about Trump in the headline. Now, they didn't do that with Bernie Sanders when he had. They didn't do that with the Democrats when other people came out. They didn't do that with President Obama with the church, the horrible situation with the church. They didn't do that. They put my name in the headlines. It's when I say enemy of the people, I'm talking about the fake news, and it is fake. Which, which and the thing is, my people understand. One quick story. So, a reporter for the Washington Post does a story that a st place that I was doing, an arena, was empty. And he shows a picture. Not a very good crowd, Mr. Trump, something to that effect. And then it turned out that he took the picture five hours before the people started coming into the arena. The arena was <laughs> packed and there were thousands of people outside. They had to retract it. But this is the kind of dishonesty that we have. Now for more of my interview with President Trump. Can we move to some individual races? Florida, sure. obviously so important to 2020, but important period. Andrew Gillum against Ron DeSantis. Uh, Ron DeSantis, congressman, strong supporter of yours. 
Over the weekend, you called Andrew Gillum. You referenced him being a thief. Yeah, what did you mean by that? Well, the FBI offered him tickets at $1,800 a piece, and he took them. He took a trip with the same FBI agent. I guess he was posing as a developer or something. The man Stone Cold took this stuff. I don't even think he should be allowed to continue on with the He race. responded today by calling you weak. You're howling because you're weak. That's what oh, he I'm said weak. in a tweet. I haven't, I haven't heard that one lately. That's okay. Good. That's a change of pace. Look, here's a guy that, in my opinion, is a Stone Cold thief. And his city, Tallahassee, is known as the most corrupt in Florida and one of the most corrupt in the nation. He's a disaster, and how he's even close to being tied is hard to believe. But Florida can't have. If Florida has a governor like that, and I know Florida better than I know practically anywhere, Florida will become Venezuela. It will be a disaster. And you have Ron DeSantis, who is a Harvard Yale guy. He's had a really terrific, you know, he's a very good person. He's going to be a very, he's going to be a very good to a great governor. This other guy is a stone cold. In my opinion, he's a thief. How can you have a guy like this? And you just look at his record. Also, look at his, the job he's done as the mayor of Tallahassee. He's a total disaster. John James, of course, uh, running for Senate. Star. Uh, Beto O'Rourke is down on the polls since you came in Texas, but John James is only eight, nine points yeah, off yeah. his Senate uh, bid. He's an like Army he's doing, combat veteran. Right, right. Why do you think he's not getting the play? He's by the media? doing so well that I'm trying to get to Michigan. That's how well John James. John James is a star. African American. Great guy. And you know how John James, he was one of four or five people running. And I'm watching television, and I see John James. I said, who's that guy? He's running in Michigan. Let me see it again. And I said, that guy is great. He's a star. Now, she, I don't know, she's just a clone for, all she is is an Stabenow. automatic vote. Debbie Stabenow. She's been a disaster for Michigan. She's an automatic vote for Schumer. John James is a young star. And I said, I'm going to back him. And I backed him. I did a little research. I backed him. And he's taken off. He ends up winning with, you know, not a lot of money. He ends up winning the primary. And he's doing really well. He's down seven, which sounds like a lot. That's nothing, because normally they're down 25 or 30. Obama is kind of following you on the campaign trail. He's, he was in Wisconsin. How, how are his crowds? Yeah, Wisconsin. Uh, he's going to Florida this week. And he brought up the issue of the caravan. And he said the following. They're trying to convince everybody to be afraid of a bunch of impoverished, malnourished refugees a thousand miles away. That, that's, the, that's the thing that, that is the most important thing in this election, not health care, not, not uh, you know, whether or not folks are, are able to retire. Suddenly, it's this group of folks, we don't even know where they are, they're way down there. Don't fall for that kind of fear mongering. We're scaremongering people on the border. Country. Yeah. Well, he's trying to do the opposite. Uh, it's the problem with our country. When you look at that caravan and you look of largely, very, you know, big percentage of men, young, strong, a lot of bad people, a lot of bad people in there, people that are in gangs. We don't want them in this country. If they want to come into the country, you have to apply like other people. We have millions of people coming in. They're applying. They're coming in legally. We have a very strong border. I called up the military. This caravan is not. They're wasting their time. They are not coming What's into the, the country. What's the military going to be able to do? Ob um, They'll uh, be able Obama to do and fine. Bush both sent the National Guard. But it had no me. effect. They're not me. This is the, I'm sending up the military. This is the military. And they're standing there. And one thing that will happen. No lethal force. When they are captured, we don't let them out. What has been happening, and we're not as of pretty recently, we're not letting them out. What happens is they would catch and release. We're catching. We're not releasing. So if they want to come over, but we're not even doing that. We're not letting them into this country. We're not going to let gang members. Buy. But what if they're applying for asylum? Isn't the law because Congress didn't If they apply the for asylum, we're going to hold them until such time as their trial Where? takes place. Where? Do we have the facilities? We're going to put up, we're going to build tent cities. We're going to put tents up all over the place. We're not going to build structures and spend all of this, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars. We're going to have tents. They're going to be very nice. And they're going to wait. And if they don't get asylum, they get out. And very few people, they don't actually, if you want to wait, they don't usually get asylum. You know that. 80 percent. The problem rejected. is they release them in, and then they have the trial three years later, and nobody shows up. But we are going to, unlike Obama and unlike others, we are going to take the people, we're going to put them in, and they're going to wait. And you know what? Two things happen. When they find out that that happens, you're going to have far fewer people come up. 
And also, President Obama separated children from parents. Nobody talks about this. Until a judge about came it. along and said, can't no, no. do it. He separated. No, President Obama separated. No, in the beginning. Okay, just so we all understand. The you New York know, Times they, is saying the military, Mr. President, um, being called up by you is an election year play. Is this invaded. politics or is this real? When you look at that, thousands of people, somebody said, you know, now on that one, they build it down. I'm pretty good at figuring out how many people. Thousands and thousands of people on the bridge. When you looked at that bridge loaded up with people, that's called an invasion of our country. This has nothing to do with elections. And I've been saying this long before election. I've been saying this before I ever thought of running for office. We have to have strong borders. If we don't have strong borders, we don't have a country. Um, Democrats are worried about the Latino vote suddenly. They're worried they're not going to get the numbers they to show be. up. They should be. Why? You know Lat why? Because the Latinos, the, the Hispanic Americans, have the best unemployment numbers and employment numbers in the history of our country. The African Americans have the best employment and unemployment numbers in the history of our country. Asians, best employment numbers in the history of our country. Women, 65 years. You know, all of these things, women have the best numbers they've had in 65 years. They should be worried. How are you going to expand into these traditionally Democratic um, areas? With Kanye results. West spent some time he here. Right. It's he fascinating. Right. Jim he, Brown. Yeah, uh, yeah they were so great. Is he, how big an effect is West on this push for African American support? Well, a person came into my office who does poll numbers said, I do not believe how good these poll numbers are with African Americans. And you see what's happened with my poll numbers. But here's what also happened. When we have the best employment numbers, the best median income numbers for all of these groups, I mean, we have the best numbers we've ever had. And I sometimes jokingly say it's going to be awfully tough to beat me in a debate when I have the best numbers ever produced. So I think they should be worried. They should be worried about the African-Americans because they're going to lose them. Will you do some events in the um, inner city? I'm the doing them, yeah. I already have them scheduled. Um, one thing that uh, I think a lot of us are very concerned about is what's happening with the market uh, this year. It's flat for the year, down a little bit, uh, off its record high, both the S&P and the Dow. I know you've complained about the Fed before. How much is cheap credit globally is a part of this problem? Well, Remember this, Obama, President Obama had the worst uh, recap that we've ever had since the Great Depression, okay, in terms of coming back. But he was dealing with zero money, zero interest money. We actually created value for money. So the people that have money in the bank and did it the way you're supposed to do it, they're actually getting interest on their money now. Uh, the Fed is being very tight. Now, in one way, you have to say that's very conservative. That's a good thing from the standpoint of conservative. I don't like it because it closes it down a little bit. But we're up. We were up almost 50 percent from the time I got elected. Almost 50. In fact, more in some instances. Uh, and now we're down just a little tiny bit. But we have such a strong, when you go job numbers, when you go companies moving into our country, we have so many companies, big ones like Foxconn and like the car companies. They're moving back to Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, South Carolina, North Carolina, Florida. They're coming back. And nobody's ever seen this. You've never seen it before. They left, and they had no intention. We just signed a deal with Mexico and with Canada. We did a new deal with Korea. How about Bolsonaro? You talked to him last night. He was what, great. what can we expect? Oh, no, for, he was great. He's called the Trump of South I know, America. I, know. I, was, so, I told him I'm honored. But uh, we had a great conversation, and a he's deal? now the head Trade of Brazil. Deal? Yeah, I could see that happening. You know, Brazil's treated us very tough because they charge very big tariffs. Brazil has been very tough. So we'll be able to straighten that out. But, and we have, of course, what's happening with China. China has been really hurting our country economically. And you see, we're going to win that one. It's going to happen. We're going to win that one. How confident are you about uh, the well, deal? I'd like to make a deal right now. I just say they're not ready. $250 billion additional tariffs if that deal doesn't go through. $250 billion, and I have $267 billion waiting to go if we can't make a deal. Are you optimistic? Scale yeah, of 1 I, to 10. I, I think that we will make a great deal with China, and it has to be great because they've drained our country. We have really helped rebuild China. They've taken up. They've been taking out an average of $500 billion, billion a year for many years. Not going to happen anymore. Who's your dream person to run against in 2020? You've already raised $100 million. Uh, yeah. Dream, dream candidate to run well, against. Well, so far, I like them all. I don't see anybody that Hillary's not, have. She's apparently she's I not like down her and too. Out. I like her, too. I'd be very happy with Hillary. I like them all. I don't see anybody that 
I wouldn't enjoy running against. And, you know, that could happen, but I don't see it right now. A couple other questions Fox viewers really want to know. Declassifying those documents, they were kind of kicked over to the inspector right. general. Right. Why not declassify well, them? We're Get getting, it all out. We're getting very close to doing what we have to do. I want to wait till after the election. Why are you and Rod Rosenstein such good friends now? It seems like everything's been uh, look, look, settled. I'll tell you, I do get along, but this should have never. There should have never been a special counsel, in my opinion. It's an illegal investigation, totally. A lot of people agree with me. A lot of people on your show and on other shows agree. Uh, there was no collusion. There was never any collusion. It shouldn't have ever happened. But with all of that being said, I do get along, uh, and I have made everything available. You know why? Because I have nothing to do with Russia. Uh, Hillary was a lousy candidate, and I did a very good job. You're going to do written questions, go, written she answers? Didn't, wait, she didn't go to Wisconsin. She didn't go to Michigan enough. She didn't do what she had to do to win. And it's just one of those things. But we have nothing to do with Russia, and I think you that you probably know that almost better than anybody. Uh, the uh, written questions to Mueller's uh, well, written answers do, to his we're questions. We're do. I mean, it's ridiculous that I have to do anything because we didn't do anything. But we will probably uh, do something. Yes, where we'll respond to some questions. Uh, well, how's Melania that. doing? She's doing fantastically, really good. She's doing a great job. Just got back from Africa. And she saw some things that were very eye-opening and tremendous poverty. Tremendous poverty. So we're trying to help. Thank you, sir. Thank you Thank very you for much. Your time. Thank you. Thank really you. Really appreciate it.